I said for you to give him a call. He's waiting by the phone. Yeah, I can read. Do you, um, bring back, what's his name? Jack. Yeah, that's right, him. Not yet, no. You going to? Nah, not much point. Yeah, best to leave the past in the past. Best place for it. For me, anyway, I think. KG Sydney Water Police, the police launch Nemesis. Report of a stolen runabout at Danger Cove. Please attend. Well, oh, great. Thanks for your help. Thanks. What do you say? He said a runabout's been stolen. He uh, reckons he saw a couple of kids hanging around earlier. Thinks they might be likely suspects. Any description? Yeah, boy and a girl. Girl was wearing jewellery, you know, nose rings, that sort of thing. And the boy was wearing a beanie, a blue one. Blue beanie. Oh, that shouldn't be too difficult to find. A description like that fits about every second teenager in the city. Yeah, well, I told him we'd keep an eye out and we'll inform the owners. Her name's Jennifer Martin. She lives at uh, Danger Cove, which means we can only get there by boat, obviously. OK. Oh, Long Brown Wharf. This is it. Not even Easter. What's the story? Uh, his name's Ken Martin. Apparently he was working on the fence with a nail gun when the neighbor came across and grabbed it and attacked him with it. Who's the neighbor? Um, Owen Randall. He took off in a cruiser after the fight, apparently. Not surprised. Anyone see it? Not a soul. Who called in the job? No one. We were here about a stolen runabout. Belongs to the wife, Jennifer Martin. Jennifer Martin took out an ABO on Owen Randall about a month ago. So if he wasn't allowed to approach her, he certainly wasn't allowed anywhere near the property. Uh, any reason why? Yeah, dispute over a boundary fence. Um, she received um, permission to put up a boundary fence, didn't want to go halves, so he's been abusive ever since. Thanks, Helen. We'll take it from here. <clears throat> yes, can I help you? Gillian Swain. My client would like to speak to one of your detectives. Uh, they're not here right now, but uh, what's it in relation to? Breach of an AVO. And your client is Owen Randall. I was trying to do some work on the phone to a client. What do you do for a living, Mr. Randall? I'm a financial advisor. Superannuation, investments, that sort of thing. He's a scumbag. He calls himself a financial advisor. Con artist, more like it. You ask Jennifer. She's a real business person. He starts up this hammering and nailing. I couldn't even hear myself think, so I just went over and asked him if he could stop for a while so I could finish talking to my client. And you deliberately breached your AVO. My client made a simple request from his side of the fence. Mr Martin responded by threatening him with a nail gun. But he wife's the problem. She's the one who loads the gun, he just fires the bullets. Except it was you that fired the nail gun, Mr Randall, not him. And you'll be charged with breaching an AVO as well as with malicious wounding. I was provoked. He just ran at me and grabbed the nail gun, yelling and screaming. Man's a complete lunatic, always has been. 
That's why Jennifer slapped that court order on him. Well, what do you do for a living, Mr. Martin? Used to run my own business, Tiles. Went bust six months ago. Listen, has anyone told my wife? Jennifer this, Jennifer that. Easy to see who wears the pants in the family. Well, a lot of fellas like it that way. Yeah, no one I know. Oh, everyone I know. Oh, hello. Detective Goldstein from the Water Police. Uh, I'm looking for Jennifer Martin. Uh, she's not in yet. Um, I'm her PA, Priscilla Conway. Can I help you? Uh, you don't know when she'll be back, do you? Well, it's hard to tell with Jennifer. Uh, I'll check her diary. Come this way. Thank you. I hope there's nothing serious. Oh, her runabout's been stolen. Her husband asked us to contact her. Uh, she's had a meeting with one of our contractors. Do you want me to call her? Yeah, if you could. Should I tell her about the boat? No, no, no. Just tell her I want a word with her. Oh, hello. Uh, Jennifer Martin, please. It's her assistant here. Really? Uh, no, no, it's fine. Oh, thank you. Uh, um, that's strange. She hasn't turned up. Jennifer's never missed an appointment in her life. Yeah. First time for everything, eh? Vic AG, Sydney Water Police. This is the police launch nemesis. Currently in pursuit of two juvenile offenders in a four-metre runabout heading towards Riverview Wharf. The two offenders are now on foot heading up to the bush. We're at uh, Riverview Wall. <laughs> Thank you for the use of your boat, sir. I just lost them, but they're around here somewhere. We're checking out the runabout now. It's definitely Mrs. Martin's. Yeah, well, I'll keep looking. Taylor? Blood. Yep, get on the way. Portable One, return to our location now. We found blood on the runabout. From what? Uh, we don't know. Just return now. The suspects could be armed. Local cars are out looking for the kids. Copy that. I'm on my way. We'll get on to Dave. Get to see what they dumped, huh? So 
These look like what the kids threw overboard. Yeah, it looks like it. Not something a teenage girl would carry around. Whoa. Looks like they've been busy. No purse. Belongs to a Jennifer Martin. That's their nicked bag, too. Yeah, but they didn't get the car. Mercedes. Must be back at the wharf. Unless... There's another set. Pack it up. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys. You found Jennifer Martin yet? No, not yet. Frank's looking into it. She hasn't turned up for work yet. Her assistant thinks it's a bit odd. What is that smell? Oh, we think it's coming from the boot. Thought we'd leave it to the experts. Whoa. Looks like she didn't make it to work. I'd say she didn't even make it home last night. Rachel? Yeah. All right. Yeah, some over there. Looks like someone was hit and then... Yeah, yeah dragged off to the wharf. Yeah. Jennifer Munn? Maybe. Maybe. Off her car? Yeah, more than likely. Fingerprints? No, nothing on the goods thrown overboard, but um, crime scene, they got a good set of prints from the boot of the car and the boat. They'll also send samples of the blood found on the car and, and near the boat uh, to be tested, see if they match. They're also going to see if they match Mrs Martin's. Of course, we're searching the vicinity of the area for any sign of a body or a weapon. Right. What about the kids? Think they're responsible? Well, yeah, they're our best lead, but, I mean, who knows? Like, what about the neighbour? He was aggro enough to staple Ken Martins to a tree. Maybe he's responsible. But responsible for what? I mean, all we know is Mrs Martin's missing. Has someone told her husband yet? Yeah, we're just about to do it. He'll have to identify the handbags. OK. Yeah, that's Jennifer's. Right. Uh, we found her car, parked at the marina. There was some um, shopping and a briefcase in the boot. It also looked like someone had been injured. Oh my God, has someone hurt my wife? Uh, we don't know, but, um, well, she's missing, so we need to ask you a few questions. Her purse wasn't found in a handbag, so if she had any credit cards, we suggest you cancel them. Yeah, 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 of course. Uh, I, I don't understand. Where's my wife? When was the last time you saw her? Yesterday morning. The shopping docket indicates that she bought the things yesterday, so we assume she was on her way home last night. Why didn't you tell us she didn't arrive? Well, I didn't know. I mean, I wasn't expecting it. Why not? She's She's got a flat in town. If she works late, then she stays there rather than driving all the way home. She was going to come home, but she didn't ring you. No, she never rings. I mean, she either stays there or comes home. I never know whether to expect her or not. What's the address of the flat? Uh, McPherson Street, Bronte. You got a key? No, no, I, I've, uh, I've never been there. I know that sounds strange, but uh, I haven't. Hardly ever leave the cove. All right, his wife's got an apartment in the city and he's never been there. Pull the other one. Yeah, it sounds weird, but I don't think he was lying. Trust me, he was lying. Yeah, maybe, but he seemed concerned about it. Look, his wife's going home to cook dinner for him, or get him to cook it for her, and he doesn't know bull. I admit it, Frank, you just don't like him because he's a wimp. I've got nothing against wimps. I just hate it when they lie to me. No wonder she hasn't been answering her phone. I've been trying ever since your last visit. This is terrible. What could have happened to her? Uh, when did you last see her, Miss Conway? Uh, about 5.30 yesterday afternoon. Jennifer left early for once. She'd had a bit of a tiff with Ken the night before. She wanted to go home early and make him dinner, make it up to him. Uh, the last time I spoke to her was about 6 o'clock. She called me from the supermarket on a mobile. Oh, do you have her mobile number? We just want to check her calls. Yeah, of course. What was the fight about? Pardon? Between her and her husband. Well, I don't really know. It couldn't have been much. I mean, Ken adores her. Things have been a little bit strained since his business went down, that's all. And this dinner, was it a surprise or had she run Ken through the day? Um, sorry, I don't know. Do you know what she was wearing when she left the office? Yes, a, a suit. Um, a skirt and jacket, beige colour with a pale blue blouse. Did you know Mrs Martin had an apartment? Yes. Um, yes, I helped her find it. You got a key? Uh, not personally, but I think she keeps it in here somewhere. She's not there, though. I've tried calling. You know, 
She knows more about Jennifer Martin than her own husband does. Yeah, most personal assistants do. No, nah, not in a good marriage. Now, what about that fight she had with Ken? Maybe there's more to it. Oh, who knows? I mean, maybe those kids killed her for a handbag. It's a cosy little place. Hmm. Very neat. Hmm, clean. Mm. It's like a display home. Yeah. Not like your place, eh, Francis? No. I didn't notice Jennifer Martin had a five o'clock shadow on that photo. No. Apparently her husband's never been here. Or if he has, would he wear that? Jeez, look at that. It's a beard. Yeah. Ears for extra stimulation, eh? I don't know about that. <laughs> Either Ken Martin's lying, or she's using the apartment as a rendezvous with some other bloke. Yeah, our money's on the rendezvous option. You got any leads on who this other bloke could be? Oh, look, apart from the mug and the condoms, there's nothing else in the apartment. Uh, we checked a file of facts. Dozens of men listed. It could be anyone. Mm. We're going to talk to the assistant again. She could know something. Hey, yeah. Got results from the blood tests here. And according to Martin, his wife's blood type matches the samples we found on the boat and the car. Um, did you check the mobile calls? Yeah, I did. Uh, uh, last call was made at six to her office. All oh, right, like her assistant said. Hello, Goldstein. Fingerprints? Well, the uh, fingerprints on the boot are hers. What about on the boat? Uh, they belong to the kids, we think, but there's nothing on record. Jennifer Martin's visa card's just been used. Two tickets to the Gold Coast in her name and in Ken's. Flight leaves in one hour. Oh, radio. Um, I'll get off to the airport, make sure they're detained. G'day, folks. I'm Detective Holloway. This is Detective Goldstein. Just want to ask you a couple of questions about what you've been up to. Should start with a couple of names. Yeah, they said you weren't going to be cooperative, but honest, um, not in your best interests. Look, if you don't give us your names, you won't get bail. Is that what you want? We didn't do anything. You used Jennifer Martin's credit card. We know that you're not her. I think that's something. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you see, a couple of kids matching your description were seen driving a boat. You were seen throwing a handbag away, and now you've been caught using her credit card. Really, you should give us a couple of names. Well, can we just speak to my dad's lawyer? You can't see him until you give us your names. Look, it's a she, and, and my name's Danny. Danny Randall. Whereabouts do you live, Danny? It's around a Dango Cove. Your dad isn't Owen Randall, is he? Yeah, so what if he is? Sergeant Blackmore. Ms. Swain. What can I do for you? You're holding Danny Randall. I take it you wear only 15. Yes, we have a Salvation Army officer looking after him now. Well, his father's here now. Out so soon, Mr. Randall. She's got me bail. Well, for breach of an AVO and malicious wounding. What can I say? He's got a good lawyer. You recognise this, Daniel? Uh, it's off a Mercedes. Yeah, it matches the one taken from Jennifer Martin's car. It all looks the same to me. Mm. Well, it's found in the backpack that you dumped off the boat. How did you get Jennifer Martin's gold visa card? I, I got it from a handbag. All right, where'd you get a handbag? Right. from the car. It was open and lying in the front seat. All right, when was this? This morning. Mm -hmm. That was before you stole the boat, was it? Well, I didn't steal the boat. I, I only borrowed it, just to take the handbag back. Oh, really? Right, you just took the long way around, did you, and, and didn't stop for the police? Well, I just panicked. Where were you last night? Were you in the car park? No, I, I was at home. Watching TV with Dad. You want a biscuit, Kylie? No. Go on. I've got tons, please. So is Danny your boyfriend? We hang out. What, at Danny's house? Sometimes. We usually go down the wharf. It's about halfway between his place and mine. If you know Danny's father 
and Mrs. Martin, they weren't very friendly. Might have mentioned it. Danny's old man's always gone off about something. Then Danny take his father's side? And what do you think? Yeah, we charged him with malicious damage and a few other things, but, you know, they claim to know nothing about Jennifer Martin's disappearance. Yeah, apparently, uh, Daniel Randall, he was watching television with his dad all night, whatever that's worth. And Kylie Unwin, she claims she was home. The mother verifies that. Well, what about Jennifer Martin's mystery man? Any more leads on him? Well, I'm meeting her assistant here, and um, I'll talk to the other residents in the apartment, see what they know. Right. OK. Close the door, Frank, and I'll lock up. I'm sorry I'm late. Please take a seat. So, you still don't know what happened? No, um, unfortunately we don't. But, uh, look, we do have reason to believe she was having an affair. I wouldn't know. Look, I know you're very loyal to your boss and you wouldn't want to do anything to damage your reputation, but if you know anything, even something, really it might help us. Uh, look, I, I really don't know. She made a joke about some young man being interested in her a few months ago. Sounded like she fancied him too, but she only mentioned it once. Look, had she changed it all lately? I mean, was she more stressed or unhappy or even happier? Well, I know that she was a bit uptight last week. All that business with the neighbour. Owen oh, Randall? Yes. And she also thought that someone was following her. But I didn't mention it before because, well, she only mentioned it the once. She laughed it off, made some comment about still being able to attract men at her age. So it was a man that was following her? Hmm. As far as I know, it only happened the once. And where did he follow her? Huh? No, to the apartment. I'm a private investigator. All right. Let's see your life. <laughs> Who hired you? I can't tell you that. It's confidential. Oh, yeah? You want to be had for hindering an investigation? And I'm looking at possible murder. You sure it's confidential? Like called Ken Martin. Hey, why'd he hire you? What do you reckon? Wanted me to keep an eye on his missus. Oh, yeah? How'd you get in there? He even gave me the key. I said I didn't want one. Go on, get it in here. Put hair on your chest. I just want to know about Ken Mark. And I said I'd tell you over a feed. All right. Tell me. Got a call about a week ago. We met. He gave me the key to the wife's apartment. Said he'd stolen the original and had a copy made. He wanted you to follow around, snoop around the apartment. Yeah, he was worried she was having an affair. Was she? Hammer and tong. She had this young bloke over every time she stayed in town. They met at a bar down the road and then go back to the apartment. This young bloke, you know who he is? Wouldn't have a clue. I'll just find out if there's hanky-panky going on. And believe me, there was hanky-panky going on. Did you tell Martin? That's what I was hired for. When did you tell him? Day before yesterday. Gave him photos too. Bit sick, really, the thing they do with bears. So what was his reaction to this? You know, the funny thing was, he just tore the photos up. He didn't say a word. Just tore them up. Bloody good target this, I reckon I could go another round. So why were you at the apartment this evening, Willie? Ken Martin wanted me to go around and see if there was anything left by the young bloke. Wanted me to get rid of it. Not that there was much to get rid of. Why do you want you to do that? I just do what I'm paid for. Keep any of the photos? What do you think I am? A perv?
bank is ours, Frank. Well, some of us were working very late last night. Yeah, some of us have got kids to look after. So what's the go on the boyfriend? Well, I've got a couple of leads, but um, we can start by dragging in Ken Martin. Yeah. Mm. Think you still have those photos? Well, he said he ripped them up, but he might still have the negatives. You don't go near him! I want to make a minute! Hey, leave him alone! Yeah, 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 yeah. Leave him, bastard! Hey, you leave him out of me! You're the bastard! Go on, go on, go on, have a go! Go on! Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's Hey, 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 he started it. Come on. What are you learning? He threw a hammer at me. So you know what happened to her? They probably killed her. Right, just take a Bastards. seat. Just take a seat, Mr. Martin. We don't know if your wife's dead yet, Mr. Martin. It doesn't look good, though, does it? If yeah, we're trying to keep an open mind. But the boy stole her bag. He stole her boat. Yeah, but he stole it yesterday morning. Your wife disappeared the night before. I just want to know what's happened to Jennifer. I can't bear not knowing. It's driving me mad. Well, we're doing our best, Mr Martin, but you're not helping us by lying. Lying? Willie Harris, ring a bell? He reckons you hired him to follow your wife around. Why did you lie to us, Mr Martin, when you said you didn't have a key to your wife's apartment? Would you mind telling us what's going on, sir? I wanted to protect her, to protect her reputation. Oh, yeah. Go on. She, uh, she had a bloke. A young one. I don't know his name. Mr Harris took some photos of him. You still got the necks? No. Destroyed him. Why'd you ask Mr Harris to go back to the apartment? I, I didn't want it looking foolish, so I, I sent Mr Harris back to get rid of any of his stuff. In case... In case you found it and thought she was a... You know. What, a slut? I mean, well, that's what you thought, isn't it? I mean, your wife's playing around behind your back. If anyone's going to be made to look foolish, it was you. No, I, I wasn't thinking of myself. Something should stay private, that's all. Your wife's playing around behind your back and you expect us to believe it doesn't bother you. Of course it bothered me. But she always came back to me. She, she loves me. Yeah, but she's playing around and you've finally had enough. Now, I can understand that. Anyone could. You think I did something to my wife? I didn't. I swear I didn't. It's Owen Randall and that kid of his you should be talking to. He hates her. Oh, I love her. Here you go, Mr Martin. There you go. Look, I think we need to find a boyfriend. I'll talk to the P.I. He's one of nature's gentlemen. You'll love him. I'll just get you a cup of tea. A bit different during the day. At night, it's a real swing and singles joint. For yuppies, but not my scene at all. Oh, no, you'd rather eat pies, wouldn't you, Willie? Bloody A. Yeah. Hang about. That's him, bloody little toy boy. You want me? I'll be in the brass game. Excuse me, sir. Detective Holloway, Detective Goldstein, Sydney Water Police. Mind if we have a few words? Something wrong. Oh, there could be. Um, what's your name? Rick. Rick Watson. Why? What's this about? Uh, Jennifer Martin. Do you know her? Jennifer, yeah, yeah, she's a friend of mine. Well, uh, afraid your friend's gone missing. Missing? Or well, how? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. Mind if we take a seat? Where were you the night before last, Mr. Watson? I went to the gym. I was there between six and eight. Then I met some friends for a meal in Paddington. I, I left them about midnight. You can check. Oh, yeah, we will. Uh, when did you last see her then? Monday night. You spoke to her since? No. How long have you been seeing each other? Uh, uh, three months. Twice, maybe three times a week. And how would you describe your relationship with her? We had fun. She was really nice. She, she took care of me. How'd she do that? Well, she paid for things. I don't have a lot of money. I'm still at university. I guess she wanted to help me out. She even gave me a job. All right, what job was that? I was going to be a PA. It was all set. I had a contract and everything. She's already got one of those. Yeah, I know. She rang me yesterday afternoon to tell me Jennifer had changed her mind about the position. She offered to buy out my contract. 
then she couriered me a check for twenty thousand dollars. Right, who couriered the check, sorry? Priscilla, or someone around. Oh, right. Yeah, we know. Well, I hope this is good news. Have you ever heard of a Rick Watson, Miss Conway? Yes. Jennifer hired him to do my job. Oh, you were leaving? I'd been here for ten years. Thought it was time to move on. I wanted more of a challenge. Right, why didn't you mention this before? Because I changed my mind. Well, Jennifer changed it for me, actually. When was this? Would you like to sit down? Oh, yeah, thank you. It was the night that she called me from the supermarket, actually. Um, she said she didn't think that young Rick would be able to handle the job, and she asked me to stay. Um, she begged me, in fact. Right, and you agreed? I agreed because she promised to make me her partner. She'd been promising it for quite a while, but it wasn't until I wanted to leave that she came good. Mm. What about this payout check you sent? Twenty grand, wasn't it? You sent it to uh, Rick Watson? Yes, she wanted me to, and I did. Uh, look, I, I don't see what this has to do with Jennifer's disappearance, though. Did you know that Jennifer Martin and Rick Watson were having an affair? No. Uh, no, I, d I didn't know that. He obviously meant a lot more to her than I realised. I'd like to interview your staff, if you don't mind. Individually. Uh, can I use this office? Yes, of course. I'll arrange it for you. Right. Have you found her yet? Look, I, um... I'd like to talk to you about your wife's work. Her relationship with Priscilla Conway. What about it? Well, did your wife tell you that Miss Conway was uh, leaving the company? Priscilla? You're kidding. That surprises you. The business meant as much to her as it did to Jennifer. They, they were the perfect team. Oh, Jennifer didn't mention it. Yeah, well, she didn't tell me much about her work. She used to, but uh, she stopped when my business went bust. I guess she was trying to spare my feelings. Yeah, look, did Jennifer ever mention that uh, there was a prospect that Miss Conway could become a partner? I know Priscilla was pushing for it, but uh, Jennifer was never very keen. Oh, why not? I mean, it sounds like she deserved it. Yeah, yeah she, she did, but uh, Jennifer was funny like that. She uh, always liked to be in total control of things, especially her business. Yeah. So why would she back down and offer Priscilla a partnership? I don't know. Either way, it was Priscilla that wanted the partnership, not Jennifer. Right. Well, I'll ask her about it. Uh, the staff don't seem to know anything. Listen, I've arranged for young Kylie to come in for another chat. I think she knows more than she's letting on. Yeah, maybe. Uh, look, um, I'll see you there. OK, bye. Sorry, I don't mean to be rude, but if you're finished, I really need to get back to my office. I'm behind in my work already. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, look, I've used some of your stationery. Hope you don't mind. That's fine. Uh, I just want to ask you another question. Um, I was talking to Detective Holloway, and he was having a chat with Ken Martin. And Ken said that um, Jennifer would never have offered you a partnership. Uh, well, he's obviously wrong, isn't he? Yeah. He was saying that uh, you were pushing for the partnership, not Jennifer. I don't deny that. I deserve to be a partner. I work as hard as one. And you didn't get it until the night Jennifer disappeared. Until she thought she'd have to run the business on her own. I think that's the pertinent point. Hmm. Still, unfortunate timing, isn't it? So it seems. Thank you. Well, she's a pretty cool customer. She had an answer for everything, but... He still thinks she's involved somehow? Well, there was a moment there I felt, I don't know, that she just... It was all getting too much for her. She stuck to her guns, though. Well, let's see if our bandit queen sticks to hers. Listen, Kylie, this has got nothing to do with knocking badges off cars, you know. Then what do you want me for? Look, you and Danny, you like hanging around down the marina, don't you? Were you there the night before last? No. Are you sure? Because we're going to get to the truth of it eventually. I went there on my own. All right, so what were you doing there? I had a fight with Mum about Danny. She sent me to my room, but I snuck out and went down the wharf. What time did you sneak out? Nine, ten o'clock. And when you arrived there, did you notice Mrs Martin's Mercedes? Didn't know it was hers. Not until Dan and I nicked the badge the next morning. But you did notice the car? Only because of the woman. What woman? She was coming away from the marina. I'd just finished ripping off a badge, so I hid. But this woman, it wasn't Mrs Martin, was it? Because you know Mrs Martin, don't you? Yeah, it wasn't Mrs Martin. But this woman, she went near the Mercedes? Yeah, she was looking around, kind of stressed, like she'd lost something. Then she looked under the car and picked something up. Looked like a bit of paper, about this big. And what did the woman look like? It was pretty dark. 
Did you see what she was wearing? Oh, I don't know. Pants and a jacket, blue or black. And what did she do after she picked the slip of paper up? She just ran to a car and drove away. I was stressing by that stage. It's her car I'd nicked the badge from. What sort of car was it? Uh, Barina Hatchback. Blue one. OK, we're pretty sure the woman was Priscilla, but what was on the piece of paper? Well, it was small, so uh, maybe a payslip or some evidence that she'd been there, something like that. That blue Barina Hatchback belongs to Priscilla Conway. Reg UCR 842, good enough for me. Well, she's done a bunk, she's using another mode of transport. Mm, maybe she really is sick. The office said she'd never had a day off in her life. Well, she's just killed her boss. I mean, you're bound to feel a bit weird, aren't you? Miss Conway? It's the police. Rachel? No pulse, not breathing. Yeah, can I have an ambulance to flat 1262 Lions Road, Elizabeth Bay? Yeah, an overdose of sleeping pills, it looks like. No pulse. All right, it's happening now. Thank you. No, nothing. One, right, uh... two, three, four, five. No. Five. Yeah, got it, got it, got it. Okay, That's it. Come on, Priscilla. Priscilla, come on. Come on. Come on, Priscilla. Be right. Look, we know you were at the marina the night Jennifer Martin disappeared. We just want to know what you were doing there and why you lied to us. I helped her build that business. Ten years. She should have made me a partner, but instead, she said that she'd gotten someone else for my job. <laughs> Younger. Up and coming. More with it, she said. Her toy boy. What, basically she fired you? Hmm. When did you find out? That night that she found me from the supermarket. She didn't even have the decency to say it straight to my face. I've been so loyal to her for all those years. And she wouldn't have got to where she did without me, and I told her that. And what did she say? She said her decision was final. So I drove up to the marina. And when I got there, she was just getting out of her car. We argued. Um, she flipped open her boot and took out a briefcase. She wrote me a cheque. 20 grand. Severance pay, she said. I just threw it away. I was so angry. She wouldn't even listen to me. So I um, picked up the tire iron and I hit her over the head. And she just fell without a sound. I knew I'd killed her. Where is she, Priscilla? <laughs> I don't... I, I don't exactly know. I panicked. I... I dragged her body into the boat and... took it out to the harbour and I... I threw her overboard with the anchor wrapped round her. Along with the tie iron? Hmm. Look, she wasn't a very nice person, you know. She used everyone. Poor Ken. He thought she was wonderful. When she got back to the marina, she looked for the cheque and used it to pay out Rick Watson's contract. What are the chances of finding the body? Very slim. Mr Martin been informed? Yeah, he's pretty devastated. Poor bloke, except he's not so poor. He inherits the wife's business and the apartment. So the meek shall inherit the earth. Well, they'd be too piss weak to knock it back. I'm starving. Do you want to get something to eat? I do. Why not? Uh, what do you feel like? Well, we could go Italian or we could go Indian. How about traditional Australian? Ooh, exotic. <laughs> there you go. 
ครับเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี